SpaceX just dropped a date that changes everything. June 2026. For the first time, they're committing to orbital refueling, the breakthrough that unlocks deep space. But here's the catch. Before June, they need four critical flight milestones. Miss one, and it all falls apart. Can they actually pull this off? And what happens if they don't? Let me break down why this June 2026 date is such a massive deal. Until now, every SpaceX update just said 2026 or sometime next year. Vague, flexible, easy to delay. But now, they've put a month on it. June. That's not just a target. That's a commitment. And in the aerospace world, when a company like SpaceX names a specific month, they're telling us they've already done the math. They know what needs to happen, and they believe they can make it work. But here's where things get intense. Between now and June, SpaceX isn't just launching rockets for fun. They need to check off a brutal list of firsts. First, they need to achieve actual orbit. Not just a suborbital flight, but a full, stable orbit. Then they need to deploy a real payload, proving Starship can actually do the job it was designed for. After that comes the really hard part, demonstrating that both stages can land safely and reliably. The booster needs to be caught by Mechazilla, and the ship needs to nail its ocean landing. Or better yet, land back at the launch site. And all of that? That's just the baseline. On top of those three objectives, SpaceX also needs to validate the V3 generation. This isn't a minor upgrade. V3 represents a fundamental evolution in Starship's design. New engines, improved structures, better thermal protection. Everything has to work perfectly because the refueling test will depend on this generation being rock solid. Now do the math. Four major objectives, six months. That means SpaceX likely needs to launch at least four times between January and May, roughly one mission per month. And that's assuming everything goes perfectly. If anything fails, they'll need to repeat flights, which compresses the timeline even further. We're talking about a launch cadence that matches the most intense period they've ever achieved, back during flights 5 and 6 in late 2024. Except this time, the stakes are exponentially higher. Because June isn't just about showing off. It's the linchpin for everything that comes after. Here's what most people don't realize. That June 2026 refueling demonstration. It's not the end goal. It's the starting line. In the same update where SpaceX announced the June date, they also laid out their lunar mission schedule. Uncrewed landing in June 2027. Crewed landing in September 2028. Some expected those missions earlier, but now we can see why the timeline makes sense. SpaceX needs a full year between the first refueling demo and the uncrewed moon landing. Why? Because operational lunar missions don't just need one refueling, they need at least ten tanker flights to fully fuel a single lander in orbit. Think about that for a second. Ten flights. Minimum. And these aren't reusable tankers. Once a starship delivers its propellant, it's done. That means SpaceX needs to build, launch, and perfect a production line of tankers, while simultaneously maintaining flawless reliability. One failed tanker launch, and the entire mission timeline shifts. That's why June 2026 matters so much. If they nail it then, they have 12 months to scale up production, iron out problems, and prepare for the real operational missions. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about what SpaceX has already accomplished. Because the foundation they've built is genuinely impressive. In their recent human landing system update, they confirmed two critical milestones that most people glossed over. First, they've activated the hardware in the loop testbed for propellant transfer. Translation. 
They're already simulating orbital refueling on the ground using flight-ready hardware. This isn't theoretical anymore. They're testing the actual pumps, valves, and systems that will transfer fuel between two starships in space. Second, they've demonstrated the depot power module. This is huge because it hints at SpaceX's long-term strategy. Yes, the June test will likely be a direct ship-to-ship -ship transfer, two starships docking and moving fuel between them. But eventually, SpaceX plans to deploy an orbital propellant depot, a dedicated starship that just sits in orbit, storing fuel for multiple missions. The power module is the first step toward making that vision real. On top of that, the V3 generation already has its docking port installed. These vehicles are ready to act as tankers. SpaceX has also confirmed they'll use the Dragon Eye navigation system, the same proven technology that's guided Dragon capsules to the ISS dozens of times. So when people ask if SpaceX can pull off the rendezvous and docking part of refueling, the answer is yes, they've already done it, just not with Starship yet. Now comes the challenging part, scaling everything up. SpaceX's Star Factory needs to operate at full capacity, churning out starships at a pace we've never seen before. The launch infrastructure at Starbase needs to support monthly, or even more frequent, launches. That means upgraded pads, reinforced flame trenches, advanced cryogenic systems, and the ability to test engines faster than ever. And somewhere in the middle of all this chaos, we might see the first full HLS prototype unveiled to the public. Even though the crewed missions have shifted to 2028, showing off the lunar lander early builds confidence and gives NASA time to evaluate the hardware. But let's address the elephant in the room. A lot of people still doubt whether orbital refueling is even possible. And honestly... The skepticism is understandable. No one has ever done this before. The technical challenges are staggering. You need to place two massive vehicles into orbit within a tight time window. Then guide them across hundreds of kilometers to meet up. Then align them with millimeter precision. Then connect them. Then safely transfer cryogenic fuel in the vacuum of space without it boiling off or causing catastrophic problems. Every single step is difficult, and remember, Starship hasn't even reached orbit yet. So, when critics say, how can they refuel in orbit when they haven't even gotten there? They have a point. But here's what history has taught us about SpaceX. They specialize in making the impossible routine. Landing a rocket booster on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean? Impossible. Until it wasn't. Catching a falling rocket with giant mechanical arms, absurd until they did it. Orbital refueling is the next impossible thing on their list. And the stakes couldn't be higher, because without refueling, Starship is just a really big rocket. With refueling, it becomes the vehicle that can carry 100 tons of cargo directly to the lunar surface. It becomes the vehicle that can establish a permanent moon base. It becomes the vehicle that can transport humans to Mars. As SpaceX themselves stated, on-orbit refilling enables Starship to complete the Artemis lunar mission architecture and carry up to 100 tons directly to the lunar surface, providing the capability to transport rovers, habitats, and other payloads needed to establish a permanent and sustainable presence on the moon. That's not marketing hype. That's the literal difference between going to the moon and staying on the moon. Between visiting Mars and colonizing Mars, and compared to everything else happening in 2026, Blue Origin's New Glenn reusability attempts, Rocket Lab's Neutron debut, new space stations coming online, orbital refueling is the milestone that will capture the world's attention not just because it's technically impressive, but because it represents a fundamental shift in what humanity can achieve in space. So, as we head into 2026, SpaceX faces immense pressure. 
They need to maintain their lead while Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, ULA, Ariane Space, and China all push their own ambitious programs forward. The competition is fiercer than ever. But if SpaceX can execute their plan, if they can nail those four critical milestones in the first half of the year, if they can demonstrate refueling in June, if they can scale up to operational missions by 2027, they won't just maintain their lead. They'll extend it so far that others might struggle to catch up for a decade. The countdown has started. The timeline is set. June 2026 is when everything changes. So here's where we stand. Seven months from now in June 2026, SpaceX will attempt something that's never been done in the history of spaceflight. Two starships will meet in orbit. They'll dock. They'll transfer fuel. And if they succeed, they won't just prove a concept. They'll unlock the entire solar system. But between now and then, everything has to go right. Four critical flights, dozens of technical milestones, an entire production system running at maximum capacity, one major failure, and the timeline collapses. One delayed launch, and the lunar missions shift. The pressure is immense, the competition is watching, and the world is waiting to see if SpaceX can deliver on yet another impossible promise. This is the moment that determines whether Starship becomes history's most capable spacecraft, or just another ambitious project that couldn't quite reach its potential. Whether humanity establishes a permanent presence on the Moon and Mars, or whether we keep circling Earth for another generation. Everything rides on June 2026. The question isn't whether this is exciting. The question is whether you're ready to watch it unfold. Drop a comment below and let me know. Do you think SpaceX will nail the June deadline, or will they need more time? And what are you most excited to see in 2026? If you want to stay ahead of every development, every launch, every breakthrough as we race toward this historic moment, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for new space review. Like this video if you're as hyped as I am. Share it with anyone who needs to know what's coming. Because ready or not, June 2026 is almost here, and space travel will never be the same.